fulfilling his dreams of playing abroad, rivaling Frank Lampard in both goal scoring and in smarts, all the while running his own company, what more can't he do? The complete number nine, our guest today, Arda Balut. I want to quickly thank you guys for all the support so far. Really appreciate it. Watch this space because there's more to come. All right, let's go. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Three weeks ago, you were playing football in Turkey. Now you're back home in California. Quite change in scenery. Yeah, no, I mean, it was a wonderful experience. You know, things worked out well over there and season ended just a few weeks ago. And, you know, I've been back for about a week and a half now. And it's been great to just get back, you know, get a little bit of a reset and then start getting to work again, getting ready for the next step. Keep moving forward, you know. You were playing at Karaja Bay and also from, from loan from Kasim Pasha in Turkey. Do you have family in Turkey, sort of connections there, your roots? Uh, so I've always grown up in the U.S. I grew up in California and I've been to Turkey quite often. We would go every other summer or so. So just being over there kind of like helped me reconnect with the culture. And, you know, I think the setup worked out really well with Kasim Pasha and everything worked out well in January. And, you know, right away the thought was, okay, can we get you some experience from January up until I don't know, like a couple of weeks ago, right? You had um, 17 appearances, four goals, and three assists in the third tier of Turkish football. How do you explain your your experience in playing professionally in Turkey? I think it was a fantastic experience. Obviously, I spent about a, a, a week or two with the custom pusher squad, and then as the transfer window closed, went over to Karaja Bay. And there was a little bit of an adjustment period, of course, moving to a completely different culture and a style of play working into a team that's already been playing for six, seven months in the league and sort of just getting adjusted. So it took a little bit of time for sure at first. And I think as the months went by, I started to get more adjusted, just kept working hard, putting my head down, trying to learn from as as many people as possible and felt really good as I was moving forward. And, you know, as we got closer to the end of the season, I found myself getting on the field more often, being more productive as well. And overall feel pretty positive about how the loan spell went typical of someone coming into the squad right in the beginning you weren't sober getting you minutes and then you you had a, a goal or two and then you had that run which like all the way to the end of the season and a goal and assist in one game so you you picked up some form you know i think that comes when you continue to work hard and you just continue to try to learn from your environment and the coolest thing for me is just being in such a different and unique environment i think you just get out of your comfort zone so much that you grow and that's, I think that's how you grow the most. So for me, that was really awesome. And it was uncomfortable at times because I'm not used to things like that. And as the months went on, yeah, I continued to learn, continue to grow. And I felt my form continue to come in as well as I saw the field more often. And overall, yeah, like I said, very positive experience and happy with how it all ended up turning out. What was the overall vibe of playing in these, in these games, in this league? How professional did you feel? No, I felt extremely professional over there. Football is life over there, you know? And I think they did a really good job of like making that very clear. And like, it was life or death on the field within the squad. And when we came in, like when I came in on loan, like the team wasn't necessarily in the best shape. And so it, every single match became, okay, like we need a win. We need a win. Like we need to win everybody. That's the mindset that everybody has. That's the mindset from the ownership group. That's the mindset from everybody. And yeah, that's why it was pretty different and it took a little bit of adjusting, but no, it was, it was incredible. And that culture was the biggest thing for me. Can you take us back to a memorable moment you've had in that six month loan period? So it was actually closer to the end. It was that game that you mentioned um, where we were actually playing this club called Karabük, which was actually like uh, a few years ago, they were in the Super League. And like it was 15 years ago, they were like one of the best clubs with some of the best player Turkish players that you've heard of in like history were playing there. And so we traveled there and right when we got there, I was like, okay, this place is pretty sweet, you know? And um, we got to the stadium and of course they were a Super League club a few years ago. So you get there incredibly historic like huge stadium walk there and like this is this is gonna be fun you know and um obviously the game went well scored the first goal and assisted the second in a 2-1 win and it was just cool to like be there because i was like telling my parents about it and like they're like yeah like we know that club like we watched those games like we've seen that stadium so it's just like kind of like a full circle moment that i was like wow this is this is pretty cool that is a it's a goal of mine that will never happen, but to play professionally, like in one of those stadiums. You'll be back at Kasim Pasha. How, how again would you do that pronunciation? Kasim Pasha. We'll go with that. So you'll be back there soon. What's the plan that they, they've laid out to you? When I was there for a week or two, it was very positive overall. Ended up signing there. And then the general consensus was, okay, like we're in a spot that we're really like battling the league right now. And we really like you. And we want to see what happens with you in the future. And so. We want to give you some game time and we're going to keep you under our umbrella, our organization, and then we're going to bring you back in the summer camp and then 
to see how everything goes from there. But the general consensus was very positive. When you were training with that team for for the week or two, did you bump into and were you you know there with the first team guys like Danny Drinkwater, who is surprisingly in my research, yeah, he is at that club currently on loan. Cool little detail. Yeah, it was awesome. Unfortunately, Danny was out with a little bit of a knock when I was there, uh-huh. so I I didn't get to compete with him. But I did get to see him at lunch. We had a little conversation, and it was just pretty pretty cool because. I'm a big fan of the likes of Jamie Vardy and like the Leicester City story itself. So it was kind of like a moment for me to just be able to just be chatting with him and be like, this is pretty cool, you know? And You mentioned your conversation with Danny Drinkwater. What do you guys talk about? Oh, just like, honestly, it was just a pretty short conversation, but I was just saying like, hey, what's up, man? He was pretty surprised with my English accent. I get like my American accent, like my English is pretty good. So he was talking about that a little bit and just sort of like asked him what was going on. He said he was recovering from a little bit of an injury and like that he'll be back soon. And I said, yeah, I think I'm going on loan. So unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to share the same field. But it was just a cool moment. Like, he's a very nice, very straightforward guy. And like, I just love getting be able to just chat with him, even if it was for a short spell. So before playing abroad, it was a dream of yours. You had signed a professional contract with Louisville City over summer of 2020. Yet, I don't actually think you ended up playing a game for you. What's the, what's the story there? It was actually in August. And I was going to be a senior at Stanford playing there. So the COVID stuff kind of all started happening. The Pac-12 season got canceled. And then kind of in that week, I made, I had made the decision that, okay, I think what's best for me right now is to take the jump to professional. And in my head, that was always, can I go abroad? Like for me, I was like, okay, football's abroad. Like I want to go abroad, go to Europe, keep moving forward, seeing how things go over there. Right away, I was like, I need to make something happen, you know? And luckily like an incredible opportunity like Louisville City arose and I spoke with John Hackworth and I spoke with Danny Cruz, the coaches there, and they were just extremely welcoming to me. And they said, okay, we're going to put you into this pro environment and we're going to help you grow. And so they were in a very critical part of their season. It was close to the end. So they made it clear to me, okay, it's going to be kind of tough to get in because we have our squad, we have our guys, but we're about to go into playoffs. Are you okay with like continuing to grow, continuing to learn and being a guy who just works as hard as he can? And I said, absolutely. I think it set me up perfectly for the next opportunity, which was fantastic. So that's all that I can ask for, you know. You had chose to forego your senior season at Stanford in lieu of uh, this decision. So you chose Louisville City. At that point, we didn't even know if there was going to be a college season the whole calendar year. And for me, in my head, I was like, okay, if I'm wanting to go play in Europe, I know age is crucial there. So I, like, I need to be very efficient and smart with my time. And um, I'm still, I'm, I'm young. I was young for my grade, but still, I was like, okay, like, I know age is very, very important. So that was my, my thought process and um, no regrets with my decision. College soccer is never really highlighted in the U.S. soccer system. They have their place, however. And even though it's not the most brightest development, MLS Next, whatever, players like Mark McKenzie, Jordan Morris, and just recently Jacob Montez of Georgetown signing to Palace, these players have their place in the overall pyramid. What's your view on college soccer? No, I mean, I think that college soccer is a great setup. And I think... A lot of it depends on a per player basis. For me, I, I have no regrets and I'm very happy that I went to, put to Stanford to play and that I feel like I grew a lot and it prepared me for the next level a lot. Honestly, ultimately depends on the player and on the situation. So there's a lot of great ways and I think there's no one right answer. For me, I kind of had a roadmap in my head of I'm going to go here, then here, then here and trying to work as hard as I could to accomplish that. That's just the biggest thing is just having a straightforward plan. So the names that come to mind when you think of college soccer or rather Stanford soccer, Jordan Morris and Corey Baird, are those guys that you ran into while at the program? Yeah. So for first with Jordan, um, he was a few years older than me, so I actually never played with him. But by the time I committed, I had been around him quite a bit and he was just an incredibly nice guy. He was so helpful with a lot of the different aspects, helping me so much, teaching me so many different things. And that was even when he was getting his uh, call up to the national team when he was still at Stanford and just to see how humble and like quiet and just respectful this guy was with everything going on really set a good good role model for me and so I really respected him a lot for that and continue to respect him a lot for that and for Corey uh, we actually played our like his last year my first year together when we won the national championship and it was actually pretty funny because like we were actually roommates uh, in preseason and so I spent about six weeks living in the same room with him and he was, he was just an incredible person to learn from. And I have all smiles talking about Corey. He had some wonderful times. And he's just a great person. He taught me so much about the game. Whenever there was a question, I was trying to learn the Stanford soccer press or something else going on within the squad, how to do this, how to do that. He was always so helpful and like would always reach an arm out and be such a good friend. Some of those relationships that were formed are just 
pretty incredible in my opinion, and I hold those pretty dearly. During your, your two summers at Stanford, you played for the San Francisco Glens, which is a team in the USL League 2, coached none other than Jimmy Conrad. Fantastic experience. I think the Glens are really special in what they do because I think it's difficult with a summer PDL team to really integrate guys and get to know them on an individual basis because a lot of the times, like, Guys coming in from college, come in like a month and a half late. I think the Glens are special because, you know, they really, really did a very good job at how can I connect with the individual and help the individual. Yeah, it's, it's really cool that you got to work with Jimmy Conrad. I've watched his stuff since the key TV days and follow him up to this day. Is he the same uh, off camera as he is on camera? I mean, he's incredibly charismatic on camera. He might be even more charismatic off camera. <laughs> <laughs> he just always knows how to make you laugh, make you smile. He's just a great guy. And he loves the game, which is incredible. You know, you can see how much it means to him helping individuals and going out of his way to help other people feel more welcome and help them in any way possible, which is something he doesn't have to do, but he does it anyway. And so, yeah, he's, yeah, he's incredible. All right, so now let's head into the Star Spangled portion of the podcast. Your transfer mark page says you've played for the U.S. Youth National Team 10 times. Is that accurate? I was in at three camps and made, I think it was around 10, quite a few appearances. Um, went to Lakewood Ranch, Florida. I uh, went to Buenos Aires, Argentina. And I went to Guadalajara, Mexico. And just got to be around such incredible players and such an incredible setup, the professional environment. You know, it was kind of like a really good look at what, how much it means. And a lot of it's pretty similar to what I'm experiencing today. And so it's just kind of cool to have these experiences and to learn and grow from them as well. Guys like Tyler Adams, Paxton Pomica, all in this squad. Back then, could you tell us that some of these guys were that level ahead, were the, the special gifted ones? Yeah. Yeah, I think pretty much everybody could tell at the camps. For Tyler, I think he was, he was built different, mentally, professional through and through. And he was incredible to learn from. I was with him in Mexico spend some time, some good quality time with him, just like talking to him and seeing how his mind works. And he's just a beast, you know, in, in terms of his mentality. And I, I love that. Like he's just a competitor on and off the field with everything. And he wants it so much, you can tell. And that's why he's so successful. And then with, with Paxton, we were actually pretty good friends. And so we talked quite a bit. Like I remember that one of the first sessions I was at with him, we were doing these patterns and uh, Nick Tadigui was making a run about 70 yards away. And I see Paxton with that left foot of his just pull up, turn. and he plays in a ping 70 yards, but it doesn't leave like about a meter off of the ground, like a few feet off the ground, just the whole way through. And I was like, wow, like this is special, you know, that's something else. And so, you know, I really respect him and I'm not surprised at all with how well him or Tyler is doing. I think all of that stuff was up here from the beginning for them. And I think that's how you, that's how success comes anyway. It's up there and you can tell who's going to end up staying successful just by their mentality and their mindset, in my opinion. This segment called Teammate Truths. I'm going to go into your immediate thoughts on each of these players. So I'll name a player and you say uh, immediately what comes to mind. Tyler Adams. Beast. Tyler Adams, he's just a beast through and through. I still watch him to this day and I'm it's still the same old Tyler. So it's like, it's really cool to see um, how much he competes and how much he wants it. But like, that was my biggest thing. Like just his competitiveness, like I was saying earlier. All right. Nick Tagley. One of the most special players I've played with. That, that guy was something else. I remember watching him in, in Argentina, that was the first time I was with him as well. And just the way this guy was moving with the ball was just incredible to me. It just was, it felt like it was attached to his foot on a string. He was such a cool, like, funny guy at the same time. And, you know, unfortunately, he's been, like, dealing with some of that yeah. back. Stuff and yeah. it's pretty sad, but he's just a great person. So I'm, I think he'll have a great chapter in his life, next chapter in his life, with every aspect that he's in. But he was a, he was a very special player. Paxton Pomacall. Technically different, the way he saw the game. Um he would see things before you would see things looking from outside or above. And just with his left foot, it was just like a wand. Like he could just put the ball wherever he wanted. Jimmy Conrad. Charismatic. As you can tell, he's very, he's just, he's the exact same as you can see in the videos, but you know, he's an incredible person uh, in his relationships that he forms in his persona makes you smile all the time. How about Brady Scott? Brady Scott was actually a fantastic friend of mine. We played at De force together for about a year. And then we linked up, in the national team as well. And so he was actually one of my like, closest friends at the time. And so we chatted quite a bit. He would spend that at my house. I would go over to his house. Like we were good friends and oh, he's as close to Manuel Neuer as I've seen. And he would love to hear that because he, he I know he watches him constantly, which is awesome. But now I, I remember at camp, the goalkeepers were working on pings and they would be pinging it to the corners of half field. So like from the 
from a goal kick. And this guy was pinging it every single time with his right foot. And I was like, okay, that's, that's pretty impressive. But then he switched over to his left foot, perfect, 100% accuracy pings. And I was like, wow, like this is pretty impressive. And, you know, I was happy to see that he's over at Austin now. And I think he has a very bright future ahead of him. I mean, hey, from, from what it sounds like, he could be a little super sub if he's on the bench as a goalkeeper. Put him in center midfield. Awesome. Why not? Who knows, you know, launch the striker in behind. How about Jonathan Gomez, better known as Jogo? Jogo, yeah. No, he was he was one of my closest friends at Louisville, which was awesome. And uh, we actually hung out like most days. And so when I went over there and like, we would just hang out in the apartments, hang out and just like get to know each other. And I really like his mindset was just incredible to me. And I, I think we were very similar in that way where we just wanted to work as hard as we can. We really just pushed each other every day. On the off days, we would be going out together, working on like these four goal games, pinging the ball in, turning, finishing, doing different stuff. And, you know, he's just a funny character, as I'm sure you know. And like, mm-hmm. He's a great person. I think his mindset is just why he will be successful with at his age. Like there's a lot of guys that are talented, but I mean, the mindset is the most important part. And I think he yep. has that. How about uh, Corey Baird? Corey Baird, a, incredible. As I was mentioning earlier, great person, great friend, the stuff that he grew from and went through and like in his different pro experiences and how he bounced back from different games, different things like that. Just getting to see that firsthand for me helps me so much because there's so much more than just seeing how somebody responds on the field. For me, I was like, I want to see how he responds off the field and just getting to be in the same room with him and understanding how he moves from game to game, works, continues to get better, how he learns, how he improves. All right, last one here, JT Marcinkowski. Yeah, yeah. So this one's actually from a little bit longer ago. So that was when I, when I was in high school and I was getting called up to the Earthquakes first team for trainings and he was as well. And of course, as we know why he was, he got signed a few years later, which is fantastic. But he was incredible at bringing me in and helping me because I was pretty uncomfortable at first when I was a 15 year old at Earthquakes first teams trainings. And I didn't know what to do. And he was just telling me all these different stories, telling me all these different things, coming over and just talking with me, which at that age, I'm sure it was nothing to him. But to me, that was everything. Just having somebody there that I could really talk to and be like, okay, what's that? Like, what should I do here? Like, What if the coach says this, different things like that, just try to help me fit in as much as possible. Happy that he got his chance last year and he continues to get his chance this year and been watching his games and watching him and just happy that he's doing well too. So do you have any stories through your career so far that you'd like to share? For me, kind of like a funny moment was when I was on loan. So there was a, there was a game that we had on the weekend, right? It was, I think it was like Saturday. And so I ended up getting a chance and not being able to score it. It wasn't like a sitter or anything, but it was like, like a decent chance. And so I was just going about my week the next week as I was moving forward. And I ended up like, going to get a haircut. And I'm just sitting there like, getting my haircut, not really talking too much to the guy. I was getting a haircut. And halfway through, he's like, oh, I think you should have hit that first time. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I think you're right. But like the part that made me happy is like, this is just the difference in the culture. And I was like, this is incredible. Like it means everything to everyone here. And like everyone understands it. And I started laughing. So I was like, yeah, you're right. I should have hit that first time. But it was just a great, like, sort of like, oh, this is pretty cool, you know, full circle moment. Throughout your life so far, whether it's been on the pitch, off the pitch, with your homies, whatever it may be, what's been your favorite memory of football? To be honest, I think it was it was off the pitch. I've had incredible memories on the pitch, but the one that really sticks out in my mind, it was actually at a national team camp, though. We were in uh, Argentina. We went to the Boca Juniors game, and we were at the very stadium La Bomanera. yeah we were at the very top of the stadium it was unreal um the fans going crazy like a fence all the way up to the like the height of the stadium like, separating the fans from the players and the way it was bouncing we were at the top i could have sworn we were going to fall off like <laughs> it, we were shaking every single time and i was like wow like, this is football you know what i mean yeah. this is what it's all about and for me that just struck me and i still have videos to this day of like that experience and just like feeling like I was like going to fall and I'm like, Oh my God. Like, and that just like has such a big impact on me. All right. So one last entry for the podcast, what's the goal that you hope to achieve in a year's time for May, 2022? By May, 2022, I want to be playing in and scoring goals in the Turkish super league. So I'm just going to be working as hard as I can to continue to put myself in a good spot to do that. Feel good with how things are going. Obviously always room to grow, always room to move forward. But I'm happy and I feel like I continue going this way. And that's the goal that I'll be achieving. So I feel confident and I feel happy with that. And hopefully in May 2022, we're looking back on this saying like that it was pretty cool that we talked about it now.
Arda, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. It's been, been a pleasure. Awesome talking to you and good luck with everything going forward. Thank you so much, Tosh. Thanks for having me. It was a great time.